Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear representatives of Slovak and Slovenian companies and institutions, warm welcome to Slovak Slovenian Business Forum with focus on digital transformation. We were all looking forward to welcome you here at Slovenian Digital Center, which was established by the Ministry of Economic Development and Technology of the Republic of Slovenia in association with Public Agency Spirit Slovenia, Slovenian Digital Innovation Hub and company BTC. Slovenian Digital Center is a hotspot for promotion of innovative ideas and solutions during Slovenian presidency to European Union. Slovenian Digital Center was designed with the objective to build up a networking space where companies, institutions, and other visitors could exchange ideas, promote solutions, and talk about future trends, not only in the field of digitalization, but in broader aspects of all green, creative, and smart technologies. As I said, we were all looking forward to meeting you here, but the COVID situation unfortunately forced organizers of today's event, the public agency Spirit, Slovenia and Sario, the Slovak Investment and Trade Development Agency to move online. Regardless, I am convinced that the forum is going to be as successful as it would be if we would all meet here on the spot. My name is Marko Govek and I will be your host today. My special welcome and greetings goes to the ambassador of the Slovak Republic in Slovenia, His Excellency, Mr. Peter Zelenak, and the director of the public agency Spirit Slovenia, Dr. Tomáš Kostanevic. Dr. Kostanevic, Your Excellency, Mr. Zelenak, I kindly invite you both to give us a short welcome speech and Dr. Kostanevic, the digital floor is yours. Your Excellency Ambassador Peter Zelenak, dear representatives of Slovak and Slovenian companies, distinguished guests and speakers, good afternoon. I'm very pleased to welcome you at today's virtual Slovenian Slovak Business Forum. The topic of event, digital transformation, is consistent with efforts to achieve the green and digital transformation of European Union. And therefore, it's an excellent opportunity to exchange ideas and develop visions of future cooperation. Bilateral trade between Slovenia and Slovakia slowed down a bit in 2021 due to the COVID-19 situation, but it is expected to find out its way back to more fruitful cooperation soon. Today's event is certainly a great opportunity to introduce Slovenian and Slovak companies and their high-tech products and solutions and encourage, encourage them to research the possibilities of future cooperation. We are pleased to hear that connection between Slovak and Slovene companies already took place at Expo 2020 in Dubai and we, have, we are sure many new business ideas will develop. There is many reasons why choose Slovenia for potential business partner. We have export-driven economy and high percentage of well-educated workforce. Country innovation potential is strengthened by technological base capable of own research and development and production of high quality products. Did you know that solutions created by Slovenian companies are integrated in almost every European car and that Slovenia is 13th most innovative country in the world? Attractive investment industry remain automotive industry, chemicals and pharmaceuticals, electrical and electronics and information and communications technology. We are very proud of our safe business environment, economical and political stability and a functional, well-developed infrastructure. You probably didn't know, but Slovenia is emerging Europe's leaders in the number of so-called hidden champions. Knowing Slovak business environment and many world-known Slovak companies, I am strongly convinced we have good foundation for Slovenian Slovak enterprise collaboration in years to come. Spirit Slovenia is a single point of contact for potential investors and international companies. We are here to help you establish contacts with Slovenian partners. So please do not hesitate to talk with us. At the end, I would like to invite you to visit Slovenian Pavilion and Expo Dubai, where you can witness the innovative spirit of our country. I wish you a fruitful business meetings. 
and thank you for the attention. Dr. Kustanevets, thank you very much for your kind words. Your Excellency, Mr. Zelenak, please take your digital or virtual stage. The floor is yours. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, hello everyone. Dobr dan, dobri deň. Uh, Dr. Kostanevic, special thank you to you uh, for uh, being, uh, being, uh, being the driving force in this, uh, together with Sario, uh, Slovak uh, Investment and Trade uh, Development Agency. Um, I'm very happy that this uh, forum is happening. Uh, indeed, uh, we were uh, looking forward to meet uh, uh, physically. That's the best way. But uh, as was mentioned, the uh, COVID situation uh, prevented us from, uh, from doing it. Uh, uh, I think two weeks ago, we were still set to have it physically. And the embassy was happy to be part of it. However, the digital topic of your, uh, of your forum is... Uh, uh, it's a, a lucky one because we are digitally advanced to have this uh, uh, meeting online. Uh, I want to uh, tell you that the embassy is uh, it is part of our job to be to be active in in making connections between businesses uh, uh, of uh, Slovenia and Slovakia. And it was what it was uh, it was mentioned already that uh, these connections are very. Uh, lively and very frequent, and we are pleased. Uh, the, the two countries are very close to each other uh, culturally. They are often confused because of the similarities in names and flags and, and traditions, but uh, we are also good partners, and I think it is uh, easy to do business uh, between us. Uh, uh, the volume of exchange, as was also mentioned, was uh, a bit down because of the COVID situation last year, but it is steadily growing. And I believe uh, it will be growing. The tendency is there all, all the uh, uh, intentions are there as well. Uh, I want to uh, let you know, uh, both on Slovene and Slovak side, uh, the companies that embassy is here, is open for you. If you have any questions, if you need assistance, uh, we have a, very small but capable team. Uh, there is a, a diplomat uh, who is uh, dedicated to economic uh, diplomacy, as we call it. So uh, none of your questions uh, will not uh, uh, be unanswered. I hope that you will have a fruitful exchange, that you will meet partners, possible partners, uh, that uh, this forum will be uh, a point of start for some concrete cooperation between businesses on in both countries uh, and I want to thank you for your initiative and uh, wish you all a good uh, business day and wish this is just the beginning for for your cooperation thank you for having me uh, Ostan is there thank you very much Mr. Ambassador for your kind words and offer of support. The main stars of today's events will of course be the representatives of Slovenian company, companies and institutions, which offer excellent state-of-the-art, some even beyond state-of-the-art solutions. With the use of the latest technologies and innovative business models, they create a supportive environment for the successful digital transformation of the economy and society. But before we give the word to them, let, uh, let us find out some more facts about Slovenian and Slovak business environments. As Dr. Kustanevets already mentioned, Slovenia is an excellent business and investment location and a land of great potential for your business. Let's find out why is that so. Fueled by passion and unparalleled talent, Slovenia is a pioneer in technological innovation. Its green qualities, creative talent and smart solutions have been the driving force of a nation determined to develop ideas others think are impossible. Located in the heart of Europe, with well-established links to regional markets, Slovenia takes the crown as a world leader in cross-border trade and one of the fastest growing Central European countries. It may be small in size, but it is big in achievements. Because Slovenia's strategic efforts in digitalization science and information technology empower local companies to produce globally competitive solutions, Slovenia's smart companies are not only shaping the future of zero-emission aviation, 
with electric and hybrid propulsion aircraft, but also protecting the planet with comprehensive smart systems for more efficient energy management. With innovative solutions for preventative genetic testing and high-technology laser systems for medicine, they are lightening the burden of healthcare systems around the world. Besides being an important research and development hub, Slovenia is also a powerhouse in the automotive industry. Today, its companies continue to transform the future of mobility with best-performing intelligent drive systems and the first-ever electric in-wheel motors for electric vehicles. By using cutting-edge automation and producing solutions for smart factories, Slovenian companies are among the pioneers of robotization and creators of the Industry 4.0 trend. Slovenia wouldn't be smart without the ambitious, competent and innovative people who are always focused on development and new ideas. Make the smart move and grow with Slovenia, a land of infinite potential for your business. Make the most of it. Okay, nice, nice presentation, but from Slovenia, let's move to Slovakia. Slovak business environment will be introduced by Mr. Adam Cuska, foreign trade consultant at Sario, Slovak Investment and Trade Development Agency. Dear ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you can hear me properly. First of all, let me all thank you for having us here today because I see that there are many similarities between Slovenia and Slovakia and not especially when it comes to the names, but also about the ideas that we are actually heading to. So without any further hesitation, I would like to go on with my presentation. This is just an information slide because I think you are all quite familiar where actually Slovakia is located. It's a small landlocked state, however, it's situated in the center of Europe on the most important crossroads between the Western and Eastern uh, Europe, which basically means that you can quite easily hit all the European markets. For example, to reach uh, Slovenia, it takes you only one day if you would like to go to Koper, or you can easily reach in two days Hamburg, one of the most famous German uh, harbors for doing business. But let's move on to something what is, I think, more important about the Slovak economy. Uh, Slovak economy can be defined as a stable, especially since our membership within the European Union, we embarked on a way of reforms that helped us accelerate our economic development. And since then, we still keep the pace beyond the average of the European Union. Even the forecasts for 2022 are basically saying us that compared to our neighboring states of the Visegrad group and some others in the region, we are about to uh, get to the leading direction of the economic development. Slovak stability is not supported only by good ranking or by credit agencies globally, but in fact, we try to do something more. We try to survey European investors in our country. And, and what is quite important to highlight is that 83% of them would again decide to do investments in Slovakia. So therefore, I think what we are doing, we are doing good. The question is, however, what is our economy based on? And what is the, and it reflects the business environment, of course. As in many advanced economies, uh, services amount for the majority of the national income. We clearly see that we are focused on ICTs, shared service centers. However, there is also R&D and design going on related also to the tourism. However, Slovakia is a very industrialized country. Actually, we are among the five top leading countries in the European Union when it comes to uh, industrialization. And we see that the industry itself amounts for 35%, especially in sectors such as automotive industry, mechanical engineering, or electrical engineering. However, I would like to first emphasize the ICT sector and its development that we have in Slovakia. You can see that some per, uh, points about the 4% actually are generating the Slovak GDP, and let's say in 10 year period, we recorded almost uh, double the size of the industry. It is very important for us. And you can see that actually Slovakia 
is well known for its ICT. I do believe that all of you might have heard about ASET, which is antivirus software development, which is working globally and is represented in the majority of the world markets. But it's not only about that. For example, Sajik dedicated to offline GPS navigation software or Innovatrix using biometry even in countries of Latin America or Asia. We also, when we want to talk about the ICT sector in Slovakia, we do have a lot of investments coming from abroad, which are focused on shared service centers. And as you can see, the majority of the activities related to the ICT among the shared service centers or business service centers are related on IT services, which are including mostly software development or sales and customer operation or finance services, or maybe some external support such as cloud. We in Slovakia, also the same as in Slovenia, like to think about some new ideas. And in Slovakia, we recorded that, for example, the game development industry is growing quickly. And so far we have one of the most important uh, game industry developers and we see that the sector is progressively growing compared, for example, to 2019. Uh, the annual turnover growth was 41%. Maybe you have heard about the Pixel Federation. However, when investors are coming to Slovakia, they do also focus on the high level of industrial potential that we have in here. And we have to have something to offer to the incoming investors. And this is to point out that actually Slovak labor productivity is one of the highest in our region. If we look at it compared per hour in GDP. However, what is more important, Slovakia managed to attract foreign investments, which are also helping us to bring new technologies. And thanks to the well-educated labor force, we can actually really quickly adapt and learn how to use these new technologies and also for this reason, we see that Slovakia became also a leader in automation in global level. It's the seventh in the rank, and it's because of 169 industrial robots per 10,000 employees. Maybe you have heard, maybe you have not, but I do believe that you heard. Uh, Slovakia is very well known as one of the major car producers in Europe, and not only in Europe, but globally. As, as one of a few countries, Slovakia became home for the well-recognized uh, brands. The latest one was the Jaguar Land Rover, uh, which actually is uh, the first uh, manufacturing facility uh, that was established uh, outside of the UK, or for example, the only one in Europe is Kia Slovakia. Uh, automotive industry assumes to some 50% share of the industrial production in Slovakia. However, this is also the field where we don't only want to become a car producers, but we also want to think about bigger ideas, which particularly focus on electromobility or automatized cars and so on. And in fact, thanks to Volkswagen, actually Slovakia is the biggest producer of electro electromobiles in Europe after Germany and France. There is a success story actually going on when it comes to automotive industry. And I see this also as a potential for cooperation with, with Slovak business representatives and Slovenian ones. We have a company called Innobat, which actually developed the first ever uh, intelligent battery which can, for example, adapt to any type of uh, electromobile that, are, that is being produced. And not even that, but for example, we can see a way how to cooperate, for example, with the Slovak National Battery Center, especially in the second point of interest, which is battery system and management, where a lot of ICD opportunities arise. I would like to focus also on the machinery and equipment industry because uh, thanks to automotive industry, we managed to develop a hub for uh, machinery development. But this is not only to talking about making the machines, but this is also about the possibilities that we also have in here. You can have a look at aerospace or, uh, or aviation vehicles that are being produced in Slovakia. Uh, Slovakia actually has a good record of history when it comes to aviation sector. 
we see that we moved from a traditional invention such as parachute or helicopter to ultralight aircrafts or for example the prototype of the ever first flying car that took flight just a few months ago but what about the space we all see that also the european union is supporting more and more the projects that are focused on observatory of of the planet especially in terms of the incoming uh, global warming and uh, climate change and especially here in slovakia we have a great potential to uh, develop a cooperation in ICT and informatization because we focused heavily on data products and analysis and in our company actually won what is called um, space oscar for their development of a software for space uh, observatory of buildings for example it is able to predict uh, any movements of building from outside of of space and the final sector that is also important in here is electrotechnics but this is just to show you that it has a big part on the industrial production and it generates more than one or almost one and a half billion euros of added value i would like to conclude my presentation with with this information in fact Actually, since Sario was established, we held more than 580 projects from all over the world to establish in Slovakia. And I would strongly believe that one of, uh, as, as an outcome of this business forum, would be another increase of, of this uh, track record, because Slovenia is a country that is similar to Slovakia. And there is a great potential of not just doing business, but the, uh, to develop ideas and joint innovative projects, which I would like to also possibly talk with you about just after we finish the official part and we'll move to the B2B meetings. So thank you one more time for your attention and you can see my, see my information details and you can be in touch with us anytime you wish. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Adam Zuka. Great presentation. And as you said, uh, a lot of similarities between Slovak and Slovenian uh, business environments and countries, of course. Thank you so much. Please stay online because we are moving to today's core topic of today's event. And this is the digital transformation. As we all know, we just entered into the new European Union programming period where the digitalization and green transition, green transitions are the main pillars of new uh, European strategic documents and policies. So what does the EU digital strategy say? say? Digital technology is changing our lives practically in every, in every possible aspect. The EU's digital strategy makes, aims to make this transformation work for people and businesses while helping to achieve its target of a climate neutral Europe by 2050. The commission is determined to make this decade as a Europe's digital decade and dig digital decade will be made by you. We have some excellent speakers from successful and innovative Slovenian companies and institutions who are just eager to get online. But before we start with their presentations, I'm kindly inviting all of the participants to share your thoughts, ideas, and questions with our speakers by using the chat function on this Zoom tool. Simply type in your questions and uh, the, who would you like to answer it from. So. It's time to talk about the digital transformation and for the showcases of innovative solutions for optimization of work processes and more efficient operations. The third presentation is going to be held by uh, MA, Mr. Alyosha Jerman Blažić, the CEO of the company CTCCE, Trusted Digital Transa Transactions which offers a range of solutions and innovative services for businesses, public administration, etc. Mr. Alyosha Jerman Blažić, the floor is yours. And welcome to everyone. Um, uh, I'm representing the company, uh, SETSE, which is based in Ljubljana, capital of Slovenia. 
and the company has been around uh, for over 10 years and it's specialized like it was announced in digital uh, transformation for large enterprises and also for um, small to mid-sized enterprises. So the company itself uh, was established over 10 years ago um, based in, uh, in Ljubljana. Uh, it was a spin-off of one of the largest institutes, uh, research institutes in Slovenia, and uh, we started focusing on how to introduce electronic documents, especially in large enterprises, uh, by replacing paper-based uh, document workflows. Uh, the basic technologies that we work on are related to electronic signatures, uh, document workflows, and trust electronic archiving. Um, the company has, um, has been implementing also innovative business models, um, shifting from traditional business models on, on, of on-site purchase to cloud-based services. Actually, one of the one of the first cloud services that were supporting transformation from paper-based uh, business to, to to digital business. Um, of course, the company gained uh, several um, uh, certifications in terms of providing uh, trusted and security services for the region. Currently, our products are being used in over fifteen countries, um, ranging from west to east, from north to south. Um, the company has uh, over 350,000 uh, active users at the moment, and is been implementing a range of technologies that enable different kind of companies from telecommunications to financial industries to public administration, starting the complete <clears throat> journey of their customers in digital form, from the uh, innovative onboarding technologies like video identification, uh, public infrastructure supported electronic identities, uh, managing electronic documents um, through uh, electronic workflows, and of course, digitally signing those documents and putting those uh, valuable documents in the trusted electronic archives. Um, the, in order to provide the highest level of services, we acquired different certifications, which are recognized not only on the national level, but also on the European level and uh, worldwide level from ISO and its 7001 certific um, security certification to 27,018 uh, 27, for secure cloud services. Of course, we are listed in trusted uh, European list um, for trusted um, uh, digital services and a range of other uh, recognitions um, by um, uh, appropriate bodies that recognize uh, trusted uh, digital uh, and electronic business. Uh, on a yearly basis, over 20 million documents are being processed only through our cloud services. Um, as I said, we are present in 15 countries um, from, um, from automotive industry, financial like banks and insurance companies, um, telco providers in the region, manufacturing, utilities, and of course, also the public administration. Um, I'm very happy to see that our customers have gained a lot with introducing our services, especially in the in these uh, unfortunate events that happened during the Corona crisis, where a lot of business have to be businesses have to be shifted to digital in, in a matter of days and weeks. Um, so uh, by supporting our clients, introducing uh, online conducting of business through uh, supported by trusted electronic services. Majority of our clients, especially from the financial and telecommunication sector, actually in a matter of weeks have been able to conduct their business at a hundred percent level just through online channels. So I can say with a uh, high confidence that um, even these unfortunate events have been uh, have been fueling or promoting and accelerating the shift towards uh, digital business. Uh, we made steps 
in a couple of months or in a few months that we were not able to do in five years time or even more. Uh, <clears throat> the company is of course investing uh, around 20% uh, of yearly revenue into research and development of new technologies and uh, new business models that hopefully will accelerate the transition from paper-based to, to electronic business in the years to come. And we are aiming to become the regional player, number one player when it comes to uh, supporting digital form of customer facing processes and replacing paper with electronic counterparts documents. Uh, this is a brief uh, introduction of the company. Of course, if any questions would arise in the following uh, minutes and uh, during the presentation and during this event, I would be happy to answer. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Blažić, for your very interesting presentation. Uh, knowing or not, practically every Slovenian dealing with the uh, e-government e uh, issues uses your services. So if you have any questions for Mr. Blažić, be sure to type them down in the chat tool before we move to our next very interesting presentation. Our next speaker is Mr. Istok Yuvan, the CEO of company B Turna. B Turna also provides a range of digital transformation system transformation services coupled with IoT, artificial and artificial intelligence, and so on. Mr. Istok Yuan, the CEO of B Turna, the channel is all yours. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. A uh, few words first about uh, about our about our company. Uh, we are one of the leading European providers of cloud-based and industry-specific business software solutions. We offer and combine uh, best-in-class of ERP, CRM, HRM, and uh, data analytics. Uh, we have strong uh, presence uh, all over the Europe, uh, and we are uh, industry-focused uh, with many, many our solutions, including high-tech high technology as well. Uh, we, are, we have, at the moment, we have more than 900 employees uh, with uh, uh, yearly uh, 115 million turnover. We are present in nine countries and uh, 25 locations. And we serve around uh, 1,600 1, uh, and more uh, happy customers. And we have delivered uh, almost 3,000 uh, 3, projects. Um, here is a map of, uh, of our presence uh, where we are operating. So we have uh, headquarters in Innsbruck, Leipzig, Luzern, uh, Holmsholm, uh, and, and so on, and, and one also in Ljubljana, and many subsidiaries. Uh, we can also, uh, we have global, uh, big global reach. Uh, we can deliver projects uh, wherever you see the red color. And uh, we cover a network of uh, more than 70 partners in more than 85 countries. We have strong partnerships with, uh, with uh, our uh, vendors, the, the leading one, Microsoft, Infor, and Click. Um, and we invest a lot uh, in our partnerships. So we are a regular partner, uh, part of uh, Inner Circle, uh, Microsoft Inner Circle partner. We have a gold Microsoft partnership. Uh, we, are, we have uh, uh, we are gold channel partner for Infor and gold elite solution partner for Click. Um, today, I was invited to present the view of uh, digitalization of an implementer who deals with the implementation of business application and, of course, faces many challenges along the way. Uh, we have been hearing a lot about the digitalization 
dig and digital transformation in recent years. And uh, despite <laughs> all the changes and the progress in the implementation methodologies, the tools that help modern architectures, modern applications, a lot of new tech technology trends like low-code low application platform, uh, robotic process automation, uh, process mining, uh, big data, uh, virtual reality, and so on. We are still talking about a large number of failed transformations. So why why are, why why we have so why are we talking about so many failed transformations? Uh, for sure, digitalization and digital transformation alone alone uh, have not helped to increase the number of failed implementations. Companies have been finding for years that the implementation of new solution doesn't meet all expectations. They often talk about the failed projects. Uh, and even implementation of new solution, which does not involve changes in the company's vision, changes in the business model, and does not require, uh, so to say, uh, uh, serious change management, uh, brings already enough challenges. So how, how about the serious transformation? And what are the most common reasons for digital transformation failure? So in our view, most digital transformations have problems with, with the or uh, from the, the very beginning, uh, from the very beginning, because uh, we have, we see a lot of uh, uh, uncoordinated goals supporting by, supported by silo thinking, uh, we see the lack of uh, resources with the digital skills. We see the culture that is not ready for a change. We see uh, limited financial uh, resources. Uh, and often is expected that digital transformation is a project while we are talking about a multi-year strategy. Uh, so, how, but however, it is not all the, the client's fault. Uh, the implementer also plays an important role in, the, in these failure steps. Uh, first, the implementer does not, does not have a thorough understanding of the client's requirements. That's one reason. Then second, that the implementer often tries to push solutions, even though these do not address the client's business requirement. Uh, and uh, implementer often, often improperly manages clients' expectation. Um, so the common denominators as the origin of all challenges are thus uh, clear goals, the right culture, and change management. And change management we find uh, as one of, of the mo most important topics to, to address. Um, we see a common mistake that happens in the companies uh, that see the project more as a technology journey instead of being the business transformation journey and put management of, management of this journey to the IT department. Uh, so uh, that's the reason why probably the more over the 70% of digital transformations fails. So um, what we see as uh, three super important topics is to have a defined clear goals, the right culture and change management, uh, change management in place, uh, and we follow the let's say uh, eight eight steps that John Cotter uh, shared, an eight step uh, processes for powering change within the company. Uh, first is to create uh, urgency, form a powerful coalition, and create a vision for a change. This is, uh, these are three super crucial steps. Uh, communicate the vision, empower action, and create quick wins. Quick, uh, quick wins. And last but not least, uh, build on the change and make it stick. So this is, these are eight crucial steps in, in, uh, in making uh, successful transformation. We in Viterna, uh, we also started this journey uh, in our company. Uh, why? Because we also needed the new new system. We need the, we need to re renovate and reinvent our processes, and so we started the digital transformation with our B1 program. Uh, so we link the goals of the program with our vision and implementation strategies, and uh, we appointed a person responsible for digitalization and we provide that top management support. Uh, very important step uh, because we wanted to establish a similar 
uh, experience as our clients are facing we also set it up an implementation team and a client team, although in both cases, uh, these are employees of the Biterna group. Uh, since once of our, uh, of uh, one of the uh, main or central goals is to unify the way we work regardless of, of location, uh, we put a lot of effort into harmonizing the processes. Uh, from the beginning of the sales process, when we first come into contact with a potential client to the implementation of uh, the project and maintaining a long-term relationship with our client. So interestingly, the, the discussions we have with our coworkers are almost as juicy as we have, it, have them with our clients uh, in the market. We are currently in the second phase of workshops uh, when we are already working on a solution and we expect the first launch in the first quarter of next year. So we, we took this journey also by, our, by ourselves. Uh, and it's really exciting to see uh, how digital transformation impacts uh, organization. Uh, and we encourage also other companies to take this journey because only by taking this journey, you can, you can create opportunity for new models and, and opportunity for new businesses. Uh, thank you uh, for your time. If you will have any questions, please uh, use chat room and uh, all the best and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much for your valuable insights, Mr. Istak Yuan, the CEO of Biterna Company. So dear participants, don't forget to send questions for Mr. Yuan to our chat uh, tool. And as we move to our final speaker, ladies should be always first, at least that's how we were thought in the previous millennia. But we have decided to have Miss Andrea Lampe as the last speaker in today's plenary session because she's a truly, she has a truly wide overview on IT industry, current status, trends in Slovenia and globally. I mean, just take a look at her LinkedIn profile. She is Director of Projects um, and ICT Association of Slovenia, which is an IT uh, industry association in the framework of Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Slovenia. She's also Head of ICT Innovation Network, Head of Gaia X Hub in Slovenia, and she's also co-chairing um, organization um, AI for Slovenia. AI for Slovenia. <laughs> Artificial intelligence for Slovenia. Miss Andrea, Andrea Lampe, thank you for saving me. And the floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much and a warm welcome to all the guests and of course hosts, uh, which put a lot of effort in, in organizing this event. Uh, at least we meet each other virtually. Uh, so uh, my introductions was made uh, nicely by our host. So let us uh, move to our topic. I will share with you some good practices in advancement of digital economy and society. Uh, I'm representing uh, ICT Association of Slovenia uh, and where I'm also heading the ICT Innovation Network and our main activities are promotion of digital transformation, um, co-development co of digitalization ecosystem, uh, where we partner with key stakeholders in Slovenia and also wider, of course. Uh, we develop initiatives uh, and organize work groups, uh, task forces, uh, chapters where we organize uh, our work with members and uh, stakeholders. We organize conferences, uh, trainings, um, and uh, of course, we are also focusing on the internationalization through our dedicated chap chapter called ZTEX. Um, uh, let me go quickly through the main numbers of Slovenian ICT industry uh, due to uh, size of Slovenia ICT industry is very focused on the export. It is, uh, the industry is very flexible. Uh, there are 
constantly look, looking after new opportunities and new mar markets. Um, Slovenia is land of high technologies, uh, high uh, <coughs> technological competencies. Uh, due, uh, I guess due to the common history in Austro-Hungarian Imperium. Uh, in our sector, we employ uh, about 20,000 employees, uh, plus, of course, self-employed uh, engineers, uh, and we make about 4 billion euro revenue. We focus on uh, not that much of on a big solutions, but mainly on the niche uh, markets and services like smart computing communities, government 5.0, digital transformation solutions, cybersecurity, e-health, AI and the big data, of course, uh, uh, geo information system and services, uh, of course, gaming also, uh, one of, um, I think only Slovenian high-tech uh, unicorn was from the gaming uh, industry. And I would say our main issue at the moment is, uh, or challenge, let's say, uh, it's a uh, lack of talent. So uh, a, a lot of IT companies and also ICT organize, organization within the end user would like to employ much more ICT professionals, professionals but at the moment, uh, uh, there are not enough. I, I'm sure that your country, uh, that Slovakia is also facing the same issue. Uh, a few numbers. Uh, so uh, Slovenian sector is coping with the pandemic crisis uh, pretty well as demand for digitalization was dr driven uh, by the instant need for the digital workplaces and end-to-end -end digitalization of the processes. So the, uh, the sector grow in, in, in spite of Corona in, in the number of uh, employees, revenue and total added value compared to the whole economy. And uh, also comparing uh, the 2019 and 20 with the revenue with the employee growth with a added, added value per employee growth and also of course on average gross salary uh, the best good practices and the the, the the best result for us was when we develop different initiatives which goes wider than our membership. Uh, to, we always uh, see the greatest results when we also uh, include other stakeholders like uh, authorities, like uh, institutions from European Union. And then uh, together build platforms where stakeholders engage based on their interest and their natural role. So the, the knowledge institutions is best for one role and the, the companies for one role. And when we come together, talk and develop uh, products and services together, it would always give the best results. And also very good practice uh, experience with, uh, with us uh, is when we develop initiatives together with the policy authorities. Uh, then in a the long run, uh, really good results uh, uh, came out. Uh, for example, uh, e-invoicing in Slovenia has a long tradition and uh, mainly all uh, Slovenian uh, companies at, make their business electronically, at least with the government and more and more also between uh, the companies. Uh, the other good practice was, for example, uh, development of the data models for the smart cities and communities where we work closely with the Ministry of Public Administration and develop the the 
um, common data models and the, the vision how to develop the, the solutions for the smart cities and communities. Um, like I said, uh, really good practices to, uh, to have initiative which goes wider than uh, your main organization. In our case, for example, is the ICT Innovation Network, which is one of the cluster of the Slovenian smart specialization. Uh, beside the, the members from the ICT sector, we we involve here the knowledge institutions, the government, um, the, uh, the other business support organization, and together uh, we partner for the new products and services, of course, on the area of digital solutions. We focus on the digital transformation, on the lo location data and services, uh, AI, HPC, and uh, big data, cybersecurity, Internet of Things, and Internet of Services. Other interesting uh, initiatives uh, was the Digital Innovation Hubs of Slovenia, which is host of today's uh, event. Uh, other is uh, AI for Slovenia, where we really want to um, promote the uptake of Slovenian uh, knowledge institution, where we have a really long tradition in the development of solutions for artificial intelligence. Uh, there is a big concentration of knowledge, but it is yet little uptake in the industry or uh, in, in the public administration to advance with the help of these technologies to be more productive, uh, to be more competitive, um, and so on. Um, I mentioned already Slovenian National Center for e-business, where we partner with a national authority and together build the the standards for interoperability of the e-business, of invoice, or um, <coughs> of, uh, of e-business documents. And this is the enabler of the digital economy, uh, let's say. Uh, the other one uh, I would like to mention is the initiative called Smart Society. Uh, we work really close with uh, in, with the initiative uh, from European Union living in EU, where we strive to develop the solution, the, the digital solutions for the smart cities uh, and communities uh, in European way. So it's ethical, it's inter interoperable. Uh, it could be implemented in Slovenia and also in other countries. So it's a big added value for our members where their solution would be uh, very competitive on the at least European uh, market. Uh, we were to get, uh, we developed together um, uh, interoperability and standards documentation. Uh, we, <coughs> we gather, let's say, national um, agreement on the ICT referential, referential architecture, uh, together with a common understanding on minimal interoperability mechanisms uh, and how the vertical solutions uh, would be best integrated. Um, we are very involved in the uh, data economy also, and that's why uh, we were in Slovenia early adopters of the uh, Gaia X hubs, which deal, uh, which, uh, which is promoting the European information technology and infrastructure sovereignty uh, through the also through the interoperability of the dom domain solutions. Uh, also, initiative around the data is a Slovenian Open Data Hub, where together with the Ministry of Public Administration, we are uh, building the ecosystem and opportunities for the, especially for the startups and, and small businesses to build upon uh, existing uh, public data and use it for the uh, 
either good of the humanity or even the new business models um, and the, the concrete uh, startups. Um, I hope our activities uh, helped a little bit uh, for Slovenia's advancement in the digital economy and society index. Uh, in last year, we advanced for the for three places. So I hope our activities helped uh, in this also. Le uh, for, for the end, let me just uh, invite you for the one of uh, our events uh, for the advancement of digital technology for the networking. Uh, please join us uh, on our uh, annual conference, Go Digital. And at the end of the month also, European Big Data Value Forum. Thank you very much. And um, please uh, contact me for any questions. Lampe, for your really and truly valuable uh, insights on the digital uh, agenda in Slovenia and broadly. And uh, now let, let us took, uh, took a look on the questions you have prepared for our speakers. I'm contacting our technical uh, team, do we have any questions for our speakers? If not, I have prepared a couple of uh, a couple of questions for our speakers, but uh, although I didn't have uh, access to their uh, presentations, a lot of uh, questions were already answered uh, during their presentations. So um, let me ask Mr. Istok Yuan, uh, people are often confused by the terms of uh, digitalization and uh, digital transformation. Are these terms the same or is there any significant difference between these two terms? Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, very good question, of course. Uh, mostly we talk about, today we talk about the digitalization because uh, uh, digital transformation is a is a more or less uh, multi-year strat strategic plan uh, which starts from which which not which, which don't start with uh, which doesn't start with technology first. So it starts with uh, uh, vision, with uh, uh, maybe re renovating renovating business model. Uh, 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 and Jimmy to impede uh, the, the digital transformation hand is digital digital effort uh, uh, technologies like automating some parts of the business like using uh, RPA uh, robotic process automation using low code application platforms. Uh, modernization, some parts parts of of the applications, and so on. But basically, dig digitalization itself doesn't rein reinvent the business. It's only it's only the it only digitalize uh, certain areas in 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 the company. So for me, that, that these are two completely different two, two completely different topics. Thank you very much, Mr. Istok Yuan. Do we have any more questions from the uh, participants? We can move to our next question. Um, just as Ms. Uh, Lampe uh, presented, last week we got the information that the European Commission's Digital Economy and Society Index, DESY, for 2020 was published, and Slovenia ranks currently on the 13th place among uh, 20, uh, 28 EU member states. We have jumped from 16th to 13th place. Is this a good result? How would you comment it? Maybe uh, a question for Ms. Andrea Lampe, but also for uh, Mr. Alyosha. Uh, thank you for, for the question. I mean, of course, if you are, we are looking only at the, uh, at, at the current place, we cannot be satisfied, of course, as Slovenia is really small and we could achieve so much more because we have a really, really good um, knowledge about it. We, we have these excellent companies we heard from uh, just now. Um, 
we need a little bit vision and courage and I mean, just do it. Um, so in terms of uh, the place, I think we could do, we could do much better. Uh, in terms of ad advancement from the last year, of course, this is a good news. So which areas are basically needs to be uh, addressed more um, in the digital society, in your opinion? Uh, I would say uh, we need to invest much more in, in digital. So we need to stop thinking that someone else will do the business transformation with uh, uh, digital tools and we all have to do it. In terms of uh, digital literacy or some other aspects, I see uh, the results uh, with the um, uh, broadband, uh, broadband connection uh, results in Slovenia are quite good, but uh, digital literacy is a little bit lagging. Yeah, we have uh, in Slovenia, we have a really big issue with uh, digital competencies as we fight for many years uh, now to uh, include the digital competencies and computation, computational thinking, uh, even in the primary schools uh, where it used to be 30 years ago. So uh, yeah, in the area of competencies, we need the uh, quick and, um, and the big steps, uh, but not only in, in uh, education, in formal education, but also in terms of uh, education, of vet education. So um, every company, every citizen has to, has to do something about advancement, our uh, digital skills. Thank and you very much. Uh, also okay. investments in terms of uh, project uh, for, for the digital transformation. So uh, like Istok said, it's not only digitizing the, the processes as we have it right now, it's using the technology to do things quicker, better, cheaper. Uh, and not only that, we need to think about how, how we will make our product and services digital first. And this is the core, core of the digital transformation. I can, Thank I you very much, Mr. Alyosha. Yes, I can clear, clearly support this uh, digital first notion that is <clears throat> taking place. But what I would like to uh, stress out is that um, the uh, uh, digital literacy or uh, in implementing digital technologies and digital tools I believe it has a much higher rate in Slovenia than uh, uh, than it's being formally recognized. Um, in terms of uh, digitalizing business processes in general in Slovenia, at least for the enterprise sector, the large companies, the, the big companies, we have achieved a lot. Um, for example, telecom operators have implemented uh, digital customer facing processes 10 years ago. Uh, most of the banks in Slovenia and especially insurance companies are conducting bus their business uh, towards their customers in, in digital form. But uh, what is very important to understand is also that it's always, there always needs to be a need that is generating this uh, transformation. And um, uh, like I, I stressed before, these unfortunate events with the pandemic that we had, that we are still having, uh, has been fueling, fueling uh, this transformation uh, pace uh, with great, great success. At least in in country like Slovenia, is most of the most of the business has been uh, tra uh, transformed to, to to remote business overnight, and uh, and we didn't see and we didn't face. Uh, a business drawback or a business decline um, in, in general. So it's very important uh, to, to, to see that, that the need is being generated, not only from the perspective of businesses, but also from the perspective of governments. And, and several initiatives can be, have been taken up now recently in Slovenia, trying to find this this weak, weak spots, weak, uh, weak uh, parts of the chain and, and, and gray areas 
that have to be addressed in order to, to, to make a next step forward. And I'm pretty much confident and optimistic we can do that. Uh, especially if we, if if I look uh, behind my back, what we have done in the last ten years, not all the areas are are, are shining, of course, but uh, a lot of improvements have been done, and and uh, especially us, our company, we are having customers that are getting that 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 are saving not just tens but hundreds of thousands, uh, hundreds of tons of paper on 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 a yearly basis. I think this is a great achievement, and, and since since uh, since our economy is not too huge and it's it's small but it's it's agile, uh, I think all these um, the goals that are we are defining at the moment uh, are setting up. Uh, I think they can be achieved in terms of uh, further digitalization. Okay, thank you very much for your uh, insights in this um, uh, problematic. Um, just um, one short qu uh, question for all of you. Um, although we are a bit uh, over the schedule, but just quickly, Ms. Andre Andrea Lampe uh, already mentioned the problematics. I'm currently working on a strategic project dealing on the with the brain drain issues on the city and the regional level. Um, the IT sector expands so rapidly that the industry seriously lacks the experts. How are you addressing? What kind of strategies are you using to, to solve this problem? Maybe Ms. Andrea Lampe? Uh, well, uh, we, are, uh, we are working uh, with our within our uh, partnership, uh, we are working on the defining the, the the needs and also the the competencies. But I guess uh, what helped the companies is uh, organizing trainings uh, for the for the young uh, for the young uh, engineers. Uh, but I I would say from the strategic point of view, definitely. Uh, the most important is, although it's uh, really on the long run, is uh, working with uh, authorities to try to place the, the digital literacy and computation, computational thinking in the, in the formal education. Uh, uh, the, the whole vertical from the kindergarten to the, to the faculties. It's not only that we need much more uh, ICT uh, engineers, we also need the, the other business professionals to be, to be aware about what uh, digital technology can do. And uh, when we will have uh, much more of, of those, uh, the, the advancement in, in digital transformation and digital economy will really boost and, and flourish, I, I guess. Mr. Alyosha, what kind of strategies are you using to attract the so needed experts and talents in the IT industry? I know the competition is, uh, is severe on the global market. Uh, there are no boundaries uh, for work uh, for the company from Slovenia to Taiwan or, uh, or, or even further. So what kind of strategies are you using to attract the so needed talents? Yeah, this is a very good question since we are entering the era of cloud services and these cloud services can be actually virtually set up anywhere. And, and, and this is the business model that is becoming global. So it is a challenge to, to um, especially to attract to attract uh, human resources in a small market like Slovenia is. Nevertheless, um, um, uh, when we did our internal analysis of why um, we are getting uh, IT professionals working for us, it's mostly because of the attractiveness of, of the products that we serve on, on the market and the, and the global footprint that we are having. So um, um, it's, it's, it is a challenge. Um, it is a challenge that uh, I, I uh, personally believe can be addressed by the government as well, um, introducing uh, other types, well, different framework that supports that uh, supports uh, um, uh, engaging of IT specialists. Um, I don't know how much uh, people around here are aware that we have special special conditions for people that can work like uh, self-employed. 
which is definitely a drawback for the IT companies. But what the IT companies can do is uh, mostly providing um, um, a work-like uh, environment and focusing on the products that are that are um, uh, giving uh, that are that are demonstrating the highest possible value to the end customers. And I believe, or this is the experience that we have, that uh, this is the best way to attract uh, IT specialists in in, in Slovenia. Thank you very much, Mr. Istok Yuvan. Yeah, um, you just join us back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 I just fully support what uh, what Alyosha and also Andrea have just said. Uh, uh, of course, there is a battle battle uh, going on uh, for uh, for resources on the market uh, now. The this uh, pandemic crisis only shown that uh, people can work basically from anywhere. Uh, cloud as well uh, allows working basically from anywhere. Uh, but uh, if you have uh, solid and good products, interesting technology, uh, you invest in in uh, uh, in research and development, then uh, by this you can uh, attract uh, new talents uh, into the company. So we started uh, years ago new initiatives like uh, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning. We established a team of data sciences and, uh, and scientists. Uh, uh, we have a small group of uh, people dealing with uh, AR, VR, and so on. So this is the way how to attract uh, new people. And technology is also evolving. And based on that, uh, we try to you know, uh, bring people on board. Otherwise, um, if, you just, if you don't generate new opportunities and new business, new business models, probably uh, you can't get any, any uh, new resources into the company. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, sincerely, thank you all the speakers for your time, for your insights in this uh, um, um, really uh, pressing uh, area. And of course, um, the opportunities that are arising from it. So um, with these presentations and the debate, we came to the end of plenary session of uh, today's Slovenian Slovak Business Forum. Um, I'm also uh, thanking all of your participants for your contributions and attention. And um, I'm kindly inviting you, all of you who are engaged in the individual business to business meeting to connect to your prospects according to the schedule. I hope we didn't interfere uh, with the schedule uh, with uh, our uh, plenary session. It's a little bit longer as, as planned, but it was very interesting. So um, I'm sure all of you will find the right partners, right ideas for your new and exciting projects. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Have a nice, successful, and of course, healthy day. <laughs>